Well, Kurt, the, uh, the Slick 540 seemed to deliver everything it promised. Um, you guys didn't seem to have any glitches while you were flying it. No, it everything well. Yep, everything went fine. You'll, like I said, you'll spend more time just getting your engine tuned, which is typical. Yeah. Uh, we went ahead and broke it in on the bench first. I always, it's you know your personal preference. Some people like breaking it in a plane because it's unloaded, the props unloaded. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. they just like that method. I run a tank or two tanks through it on yep. the bench just to get the needles at least at a base adjustment. Sure. And uh, also a little less vibration on the low end. Yeah. Like, you know, we've we've noticed that in the past, and you know, a lot of engines will do it. Um, and you know the DLE was no exception. You get a lot of vibration yeah. as it's still going through that braking phase. Oh, yeah. You'll get a lot of vibration at the low, you know, when you're just idling. Yeah. And there's and no sense putting the airframe through. Yeah, that I don't like putting the torque stand. on the. Yep, yeah. I don't like putting the torque on it. So I just run it on the bench a couple tanks. It smooths it out a lot. Yeah. And it makes it a little less hassle at the field. But All right. uh, yeah, she went up and flew as as it, as, as expected. As expected. Good. Well, as let's intended. get in. Let's get into the review. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> we'll start with model model characteristics. Build as advertised. Uh, Kurt, you gave, you did all this, uh, the build, the flying, everything, so this is going to be all on you. Uh, yeah. Build is advertised, five out of five, and we've talked quite a bit about the it The instructions already. were extremely comprehensive. Um, in fact, we're seeing now with Aerobee's models, they're, they're moving this new instruction manual through yeah. all the different models, which is, you know, it's second to none. It has all the details yeah. you're looking for. It has all the instruction steps, and there's a lot of, you know, imagery and stuff, so very comprehensive yes. build instructions, which can have a huge impact. I mean, if you've got oh, well, a sure couple steps that may be even considered a slight deviation or a slight, yep. you know, uh, what, you, what you consider true modeling as opposed to just RF assembly, if it's, if it's covered in the directions, it isn't a, you know, it isn't, it's just a step then. Exactly. It's not a, whoa, yeah. geez, I'm out here in left field, I gotta figure out what to yeah. do. So that, that had a huge impact on the, sure. on the build. All right, finish, 4.5 out of five. Um, we've mentioned before the finish of the Airbus planes, yep. you know, thus far has been extremely nice. Um, the coating is laid on nice. We're not getting a lot of warps and yep. and uh, bad overlaps. I mean, they do they do have a lot of overlays on covering over covering. Yep. And it seems to be laying down really. You know, nice. when you pop the cowl on and you get everything lined up, um, you know, a great telltale is how well the the uh, covering yeah, yeah, the stripes <laughs> exactly. and the covering line up with the painted or stripes how well the, the paint line or matches, matches too. The yeah, and they've up. got you know they've done a pretty good job of yes, getting real have. close in. The only thing that I that I you know would take mention of or notice of. And set the expectation up front is on the um, on the wheel pants. Um, when they originally had come through with with the Airbus product, they had um, gone with uh, fiberglass wheel mm -hmm. pants, very durable, very tough. And um, th as they went through some manufacturing line changes um, to again try to save some cost to the end user and and make it a, a the high value product, they went to a PVC or a, a plastic, plastic wheel yeah. pant. Um, the finish actually is beautiful on it because it's molded, you know, it's yep. injection molded, it's totally smooth as glass, the paint's really well laid on there, but it's much more flexible. Yep. And w not so much when you're flying, it's always hanger rash. It's oh, when yeah. you're carrying it yeah. in and out or you move it and you bump it on your leg, yep. it, it'll pop those cowls and spin them and they go right back into shape, no problem, but it pops the paint off. So yep. you'll start chipping paint on the inside. The word is they're going to move back into the fiberglass cowls yeah. again, or fiberglass wheel pants, pants again, yep. which, which, you know, will help. And, and, uh, but that's really the only thing. And it's such, an, it's such a piece that you, it protrudes, you're always yeah. hitting it. Yeah. If it were somewhere else, you probably wouldn't notice it. Yep. But um, yeah, everything else looks great. All right, power, five out of five. The 55 RA. Um, with the 55, you know, we, we've flown the DLE 55s. With the RA, you get a little more punch. Um, and, and for this airframe, I wouldn't want to fly it with a DLE 55. I'd want to go with, uh, you know, with a, a DA60 or a DLE 55 RA or something like that. I yeah. think that's about the right performance range or power range. Um, with our setup, we had no problems at all. We were able to accomplish what we were looking for and, yeah. and, and, and move through the aerobatics that we wanted sure. to with the power plant. Good. Ground handling, five out of five. Yeah. You know, this, this doesn't have, um, as, as big as this plane is, you know, it does still have smaller wheels. And with the wheel pants being as low as it is to the grass, mm -hmm. um, you know, would you find that you'd need a pretty cropped field to be comfortable, or do you think no, it would go right not, through No, not at all. You could take, because the benefit is, is you've got, you know, plus one inch clearance yeah. from the from the hard yeah. surface to the bottom of the wheel pant. Yeah. The wheel pants are designed as such that they're going to pretty much carve through the grass, okay. no problem. Durability, uh, four, uh, four point, or no, four out of five, I'm sorry. Yeah, durability, four, four out of five. Um, again, overall, uh, you know, if we look at this class of, of aircraft, mm -hmm. and you know, we, we've got to be straightforward about it. If, if if you take this and you compare it to um, a pro, a pro level sure. aircraft, something they're flying 3D competitions with, there's a lot of bracing and strut work and design around the impact, the force, the constant driving yeah. uh, G-forces yep. and, and stresses on the airframe because those planes are meant to fly hundreds of times, if not, a, you know, I suppose thousands if you, if you didn't find the number, the magic number yeah. inside. Um, 
through constant high torque, high G maneuvers. Yeah. So you're going to design an aircraft to accommodate, or an airframe to accommodate that. When we look at the AeroBee's platform, um, if you look at the hobbyist, or even the, the, the intermediate trying to move into the pro, and they want to get into a larger airframe, and they want to do some of those the, the yeah. aerobatics, and not be limited by the airframe's sure. capabilities, but then take, you know, take into consideration, you're not going to take your, your Ford Focus, or maybe that's the wrong one, your, your uh, you know, Chevy Impala out on the track that's stock and expect it to perform and hold up to that rigor sure. of trying to race it in a class with, with vehicles that are built for that yeah. purpose. So it's the same approach. You've got a great consumer class, a great hobbyist class airframe that's going to work you into the higher levels. Yep. Um, and when you look at the durability, it, it's it's there for, nor I say, normal use. Yep. Even, you yep. know, uh, full 3D maneuvers on a regular basis. But of if course. you're going to keep, you're going to land this thing, uh, you know, 200 times and you're going to treat it like a hardcore sure. pro 3D aerobatic plane. You may find it. You may find that it, yeah. you know, it falls a little short on that sure. aspect. But I think there's... The, the durability is the, the rating is very fair. It's it's very well built. It's rugged. It has it all in the, in the key places from the from the wood structure up front, from the birch, to the um, uh, to the landing gear, the carbon fiber they yep. use throughout. Um, we have found it not to be a weak airframe by yeah. any means. So, good. All right, we'll move on to pilot experience. Flight is advertised. You gave it a five out of five. Very axial, very symmetrical, um, right out of the box. Uh, let's say out of the box. You know, right off the right off the bench. Um, zero trimming. Yeah. You know, which it. it Testament to a true and square airframe is zero trimming, right? Sure. You take it off, and if you don't have to mess around with it, you got your CG on, yep. right where the manufacturer states it, and your all your control services are you know level and, and where, where you visually think they should be. Yeah. You take it off the ground, and you don't need to trim it. That's a straight good true airframe. So yeah, um, it came that way to us, which is critical. That's the first important step. The second, of course, then is the inherent characteristics of the airframe. Yeah. And this version of the Slick 540, I think it, it, it's shown no strong. Uh, characteristics outside of, again, very axle, very yeah. symmetrical. Um, you know, it's a great performing aircraft and, and had uh, no negative tendencies yeah. that we were able to observe. Now again, flight is advertised. What's your power plant? What are your servos? Yeah. What are those choices can exactly. have such an impact? Yeah. You know, we chose to go with you know, ultra high torque, high voltage servos. Um, linkage set up properly, we had no blowback in our control services, yeah. so we never lost tail authority. All those critical things when you're out there sure. doing it, doing and it. Like uh, you said, that's all choices. If you choose yep. to go the cheap route, and then you're going to have some issues that you can't blame you're on gonna the find, airframe. Exactly, you're going to find yeah. some things that you don't like that, you know, fortunately, can, you can upgrade and, sure. and take away or make, you know, yep. make go away, but uh, it ultimately comes down to those base level choices. Yep. Put a good power plant, good hardware, good, good uh, decisions on servos, and, and uh, you're going to really like the way the, the airframe responds. Flight time, five out of five. You know, flight time really on a plane like this is, yep. is, is really... You take a DLE 55. What is there to talk about? RA, you, know? you throw in, uh, you know, a, a 500cc gas tank. Yep. Um, you, you, there's plenty of room, and the balance is... Uh, the CG is, is, or the space inside of the fuselage is forgiving enough to be able to accommodate a larger fuel tank. Yeah. If you want more flight time, you know, throw in a, you know, yeah. another 100cc fuel to... Uh, 100cc larger fuel tank or something like that, you'll get even more out of it, but you're going to fly for 20 minutes, no problem on this yeah. thing. Now, you really get in, you prop it to the max, and you really get everything you can out of the, out of the 55RA. Um, you may find that you're closer to the 15-minute work. Yeah. You know, it, it just depends on flying style. It sure. depends on... If you're you going to take this thing up and just go high-speed passes back and forth, sure, you're going to run you, through it. Yep. But most of your 3D maneuvers are blipping the throttle. Bro. Yeah, you're on and on and off the throttle exactly. like crazy, so you'll find that it stretches that flight time out a little yep. more. But. All right, field size, uh, you have it marked as a park. Uh, flying field, I'm sure. You know. uh, yeah, it's a, a air park or a flying field. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna want to take this a flying field. It's, yeah. a, it's considered a large aircraft. Oh, yeah, this, this is, is not a, a park flyer. This is not you know private property. If you've got the insurance yeah. to cover it, knock yourself out. Uh, go to a, to a you know a sanctioned flying field. Sure. Your club flying field. And you're gonna find that it's uh, it's gonna take advantage of that space, and 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 you'll be a responsible pilot. So portability, 4.5 out of five. It's large. Yep. So you know you can't. You can't penalize it because it's large. No. Because you take any 50cc no. or 55cc gas plane and say, okay, they're all pretty much 87-ish, yeah. 90-inch wingspan. Um, the, the portability is good, though. Uh, wing bolts are very easily accessible. Yes. You back them out, and it goes right in. In fact, the size of this is such that in a, in a pickup truck with a tonneau cover on it, the tail and the prop, even if you wanted to run it vertical, it comes just below the the tonneau cover. Yeah. So to me, that increases the portability. Sure. When I've got a a, a, a rudder that sticks up too far for me to put my tonneau cover on, now I'm in that different class. Yeah. Because if I look at a pickup truck with a with a uh, cap, a cap, yeah. And then you've built a shelf out. You're going to try to split that space. You've yeah. got the opening to get into. Yeah. So it's it's 
it's very portable. Well, if, you know, if, if uh, portability is a big concern and you want to step up into this class and you're going to have to make yeah, compromise. I'm really, wrong I mean, decisions, yeah. you can't use your yep. wife's car and go, take it to the flying field. Go back you know? to your park flyer your exactly. micro if you want through portability. Exactly. But, don't um, whine. No, no quick release latches on the, on the canopy, which, you know, we don't see that a lot in the larger scale. It's, it's very common to see actual screws. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so getting Which into makes it, sense. Yeah, getting into it takes a couple yep. of steps. You got to make sure you bring your. You have a couple minutes of setup either way. Yeah, yeah, it's very right. easy. Well, that uh, brings us to skill level advanced. That makes uh, a lot of sense. Yep. We talked about it's you know it's a four channel aircraft. Um, we talked about its size. Size is responsibility. Responsibility is a skill and attentiveness. Yep. And good piloting decisions. All that comes with exactly. experience. So, um, to to take a, a new flyer out and say, all right, you graduated from a. a park flyer trainer and yep. you've, you've got your four channel down and you're yeah. comfortable with it now go fly a 55 cc yeah. plane uh would be a generally irresponsible step to make um and it's not because you can't fly it it's because you don't know how to fly it within the space that you're yes. now going to chew up and you're going to use and you're going to take advantage of with a much yeah. larger aircraft so yeah. um but you know otherwise it's a it flies like a four channel plane it's the same concepts are applied yep. uh, of, a, of a four channel trainer uh, right. With it being aerobatic airframe mid-wing, it's going to definitely respond on the rolls quickly. Oh, I'm sure. Um, a lot yeah. of things are going to happen very responsibly. And, of course, control throws. Setup is the key, you know, is like anything else. When you come through, the uh, uh, the, the directions are fantastic about uh, deflection control, expos, everything else that you want to have dialed in for your first flights. It was right on the money. We found yeah. it to be extremely comfortable. In fact, we didn't make any adjustments from the expos. So, And that's rare. Usually yeah. we put our own expos in, and it's just commonplace. Um, they nailed it right on the head with the manual on this one uh, for a first time takeoff and setup. So, Well, that wraps up our review of the Aerobee Slick 540. If you'd like to see the full review, you can go to our website at tubefly.com. For mobile users, you can go to rcflightsource.com, download our mobile app, and take our content with you on the go. I'm Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby. And I'm Rob. Thanks for watching.